Church. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study, Faith Apostolic Church. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. That is where I'll be reading. Uh, very familiar words, I think, from this passage of Scripture. Uh, but there's something on my, my heart for, for this hour. And so I think that it would be, be beneficial to the church. Uh, beginning in verse number 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. The Word of God declares, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to keep and a time to laugh. Time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. For a few moments tonight, for our Wednesday night Bible study, I'm going to simply be speaking from this subject entitled, In His Time. In His Time. Come to talk to the people of God tonight, and uh, I believe as we look through some of the heroes of the Word of God, David absolutely is one of those that comes to mind it was in Psalms chapter 40, great uh, spiritual insight, an insightful confession, we would say that David would proclaim. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. A lot of times we, we kind of skip over the first part of that verse and and we jump right into the part where he inclined to me and he heard my cry. But the reality of the situation is that David's confession is, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Verse number 2 through 5 says, He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many... O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto them. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. He said that they are many wonderful works, and that the thoughts of the Lord are to usward. And he said he couldn't, even, he couldn't even reckon it up. He couldn't even try to order them out and, and to compile them or, or even make a list together. He said, he said there are more than can be numbered. So we understand tonight, the saints of God tonight, we are, yes, enduring uh, trial on this journey that we are facing where some are going through great trials of affliction. Some are enduring many things and and battling their spiritual battles. But I offer these words tonight. These words I think would be of comfort and of encouragement. Words from the Lord. Not words from me. But words from Almighty God. As recorded in Psalms 46 and 10. He said be still and know that I am God. 
Be still and know that I am God. David's confession was that the Lord, there was many wonderful works, and his thoughts was toward us and could not even be reckoned up or even numbered. So we must understand tonight that, that God has plans for our lives, that he has great intentions and desires for his people and those thoughts are thoughts of peace and not of evil. God desires to, to, to bring glory to his name, glory to his kingdom, and he will use us. Yes, we go through situations. Yes, we go through trials. Yes, we must endure some things. And there's quite often we want them over quickly. But sometimes it is, even as the scripture said and what I feel to bring to us tonight, there is a time for us to just be still. And know that he is God. And understand that, that it is in his time. That this trial will end in his time. Your situation, your particular circumstance, what you are enduring. If you will trust in God and rely on the Lord. It will come to pass for glory to God in his time. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Beginning at verse number 15, he said, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I come to confirm to somebody's soul tonight that what the Lord is doing, what the Lord is working for us, what he is doing on our behalf through the situation or the circumstance, whatever it is that you are going through right now, if you are ensuring your life, trusting your life in the hands of God, put your, your all on the altar, so to speak, put your life in his hands, then we must understand that he is working for us. He is working this out for our benefit, for our behalf. And if God is doing that as we believe that he is, that we understand that it will be worth the wait when he brings it to fruition. Romans 8 and 28, we could quote that scripture, uh, some of us probably forward and backwards. Many of you have quoted it time and time again, and we've heard it many times. Romans 8 and 28, and we know, we know, Paul said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I'm asking you tonight, do you believe the word of God? We must believe, stand on the word. We put our faith, we put our lives in what this word says. And the Bible said that all things work together for good. All things work together. Now, that lets us know that not necessarily, everything is not necessarily going to be good. Not all things that comes into our lives is good. It's not an instantaneous good thing, if you will, but rather it is by process. It worketh. It worketh. He worketh all things together for our good. It is still promised in the word of God, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but I hath not seen. It's written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Do you love him tonight? Do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, then you got to know that he is preparing things. Preparing things. Yeah, we love miracles. We love the instantaneous. We want to wake up and just open the window and there it is. We want to we wanna open our eyes and, and it is before us. We want to... Uh, lay our head on the pillow at night and, and wake up the next day and everything is perfect, everything is okay. But the word of God declares something a little bit different. Yes, there are those miraculous times. There are those instantaneous healings or, or times that where God just does a quick work. Uh, 
But understand, child of God, the majority of your life and the majority of the situations and things that is going on, it's going to be a process. It's going to be a working out, a preparing of things, if you will. Things that God is preparing for us, to usward. Great thoughts that he has, wonderful works that he has for us. To the souls tonight that are in derision and perplexity by the constant battle and the warfare that is, that is being faced, there is a word from the Lord for us. There is a word from the Lord. And, and that word is something we don't always like to hear, but that word is wait. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. And again, I say, wait. It is written in the word of God. Wait, thou upon the Lord. Patience, Isaiah chapter 40 Patience is not one of the, uh, the great strong suits that we have, but it is something that is absolutely necessary for every child of God to obtain. We still believe the promise that the prophet Isaiah spoke that comes through patience. Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait upon the Lord. This promise is, was not to the impatient. This promise was not given to those who got, got fed up and quit and that got frustrated because it didn't come right away and just gave up or quit or, or turned aside or, or decided to take things in their own hands and do it their own way by their own mind or their own choice or their own power. But this promise that is given to us, this prophetic word from the prophet Isaiah Speaking as an oracle, God said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Impatience, frustrations, bitterness, and even anger have and will try to take control of us, but we must Wait upon the Lord. That, that's where it comes in that we've got to resist. Yeah, the Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The apostle Peter talked about it in, in chapter 5. And uh, we be sober, be vigilant because the, your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And that scripture goes on and he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. There is some things that we must stand against in our life. There is, there is some things that is fighting against our spirit and, and even our own flesh. It's not necessarily the devil. I don't think everything is the devil. Sometimes it is just simply our own flesh, our own habit, or our own impatience, if you will, that, that tries to overcome us, tries to take control of us. But we have got to purpose that it is his time. In his time, it shall be worked out beautifully. As the writer, the preacher of Ecclesiastes said, he maketh all things or everything beautiful in his time. Anxiety and anxiousness, even fear, are bombarding the hearts of many this very night. People are succumbing and becoming overcome by things because they're trying to figure things out. They're trying to make things happen. They're trying to make things work. How are we going to do this? There's people that are projecting themselves into tomorrow, projecting themselves in the next week and next month. How, how, how am I going to be able to do this? How am I going to make these ends meet? How are we going to be able to survive? How are we going to be able to get through this? How can I, how can I keep going like this? How can, can they, I can tell you right now, you would save yourself a whole lot of anxiety. If we could just truly rely and rest upon the Lord and wait upon the Lord as the word of God had declared for us too. And what I believe the Lord would speak to the church tonight is that we need to wait on the Lord. The adversary has tried to use our lack of understanding. A lot of times we lack understanding, but the enemy uses our lack of understanding against us. He uses our inability to reason or to explain the situation, explain. We, we lack an explanation for the delay. We, ask, we lack an explanation for the reason as to why. And 
the adversary will use those things against us in order to handicap our faith, cripple our trust. But you and I, if we're going to if we're going to get through this thing, whatever it is that you're battling, whatever it is that you're facing, if you're going to get through it, then we're going to have to wait upon the Lord. We're going to have to trust the God of our salvation. We're going to have to rely upon God those that his thoughts is toward us. And he does desire good toward us. And he has wonderful works that he has planned for us. Can I tell you right now that there is more going on in the spiritual realm than we can fathom. More is going on in the spiritual realm of your life than, than we can even contain at this very moment. And the greatest deciding factor that will determine our victory or our defeat will be if we will be willing to wait. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I, I do it so well. So I'm going to say it again. It will be determined if we will wait upon the Lord or not. Whether we get victory or whether we have defeat, it's going to be up to us. If we will purpose in our heart, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to wait upon God because I believe that God is working this out for my good. It is not a time for hasty, desperate decisions. It's not a time to run off half-cocked. It's not a time uh, to, to, like I said, be desperate and to be hasty. But it's a time to put it in the hands of the Lord. It's a time to lay back and, and rest and just trust in the, in the fact that, that God is God. That we are serving the Almighty God. The all-knowing, all-powerful, omniscient omnipresent, wise, the only sovereign, the only potentate. We are serving him. Sometimes we just need to be like Naomi told Ruth. Sometimes we just need to wait and see how the matter falls. Naomi spoke to Ruth and she said, let's see how the matter falls. In short, what Naomi was encouraging Ruth to do is wait upon the Lord. Yes, there is great victory that has come to David. We can read of many battles and, and we can declare of the Psalms how, how that there are so many great things that he has, he has written and praised God for. How that they have been brought out, brought over, overcome, come through. He's been rearward, vanguard. He's all these things. But if we will remember, he said in his testimony or his confession, he said, I waited patiently upon the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord. And then these things happened. So I'm telling us tonight, when you feel that all hope is gone, you're a child of God. You just need to wait upon the Lord. When you feel like you can't see your way through, you've got to just wait upon the Lord. When you feel like that, that all around you is crumbling in and there's just there's all these feelings of, of anxiousness and, and all these feelings of, of impatience, the pressures even of the situation seem to be forcing your hand, so to speak. You, you get that feeling. It's an emotional feeling that comes from, that's implanted, I will say, from the adversary. A seed that is sown and impatient and that, that, that feels like I've got to do something. I, I can't wait any longer. I've got to do something. I'm going to tell you, resist that thought. Go to prayer. Trust God and force yourself. Make yourself wait on the Lord. The weeping prophet Jeremiah who preached to the backslidden nation of Israel without a single convert, no doubt he felt that he was not making a difference. He felt that his efforts, no doubt, I'm sure that he felt like it was all in vain. But he had this to say as he continued his ministry. He had this to say in chapter 14, verse 22. He said, Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Are not, he, are not thou he, O Lord our God? Therefore we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. Jeremiah acknowledged that only the Lord can do what we need done. Only God can do what, what we need done. So he said, therefore we will wait upon the Lord. If you compile together the many words of the Psalms of David, he was a man that was noted 
to be the man of praises, you will see that amongst those psalms, all of those praises for victory and praises for goodness and praises for deliverance, there is a, a general theme that seems to run through the writings, the psalms of David. And, they, it's a, and it's an understanding that gave David come to. Psalms 27, he said, Teach me thy way. Verse 11, O Lord, lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then verse 14 said, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. In Psalms 37, he writes, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt feed, thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the new day. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who oppresseth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Chapter 62, he said, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not greatly, I shall not be greatly moved. In chapter 62, verse 5, he said, My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Sometimes it feels like there is uneasiness and unrest in our spirit. We feel troubled on every side. Sometimes we have to even speak to ourselves like David said, like the psalmist declares uh, that he encouraged himself in the Lord. But as we will find out in that psalms, there is verses that where David speaks to his own soul. And he tells his own soul to be still. Be still, my soul. Be still. Sometimes we, we get that derision raising up inside of us. And we've got to even tell our own soul, pray for yourself sometimes. It's and command that, that spirit of rest to come up over you and, and that, that anxiousness about you to be still and wait upon the Lord. I encourage you to wait on the Lord for what the Lord is doing is going to be worth the wait. What the Lord is making, what the Lord is creating, what the Lord is doing. we got to remember that He hath made everything beautiful in His time. I'm drawing close to a close, I just want to Touch a few things. Joshua in chapter 6, the children of Israel are standing outside of the walls of Jericho. They have come across the Jordan River. It was they was poised, they was ready for victory in that moment. 400 years of Egyptian bondage was over. Additional 40 years of warning in the wilderness, purging that generation of unbelief. And now they're standing there, they're encamped right outside the walls of that great city. The place that the Lord had said, See, I have given in thy hand Jericho, the king thereof, the mighty men of valor. They're there, they're ready. Everything seems to be set. But do they take the victory that day? No. The Lord has them wait. He has them wait. They're there. They're in the moment. God, how, how could this not be your will for us to take the city now? But no, seven more days they are going to wait. Not only are they going to wait seven more days, but they're going to walk around that city. Actually, they're going to make 13 trips once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they're going to walk seven times around their city. It's so close. So close. It's right there. They can feel like even see victory. But they had to travel in circles for 13 laps before victory ever came. Make this note in your heart. It was in God's plan. It may be hard for us to swallow, 
But it was in God's plan for them to travel in circles and appear to get nowhere. But in his time, victory came. You might feel like you're traveling in circles. You might feel like you're getting nowhere. But if you're trusting God, if you're relying on God, you just need to wait on the Lord and understand he will make this beautiful in his time. Saul was rejected by God. David was anointed. But how many, we know the story. David didn't get to obtain the throne right away, but it was a space of time. Then he finally got the throne. Elijah, he was a man that prayed one prayer and called fire down from heaven. What a mighty man of God. After he killed, he, he convinced the people and they cried out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Just so much power in that story on top of Mount Carmel. 850 false prophets of Baal fell and was slain. And then he goes from that moment and he prays another prayer. You would think this man that could call fire down from heaven. Man, what a mighty man. What, what, what splendor. You know, he's got power with God. When he prays, things happen. Well, the next prayer he prayed, nothing happened. He prayed for rain. Nothing happened. As a matter of fact, it was seven until the seventh time. He sent his servant out the seventh time. And the report came back was, there's a cloud about the size of a man's hand. Seemed very insignificant and very small to the servant. But the prophet of God, Elijah, he took that as God was about to move. Tell Ahab, get down. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Nothing had happened yet, but he was waiting, waiting on the Lord. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The wait is going to be worth the reward. If we we'll put it into his hands, place it in his hands, in his time, in his time, everything will be done just right. A few more scriptures, Psalms 130. The psalmist said, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Isaiah chapter 64 and 4, the prophet said, For since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eyes seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. The souls under the sound of my voice tonight, the word of the Lord has sent a word to us, a word from his word. It has come to our soul and for our sake, and we should hear what the Spirit would say to the church. Even now there is much impatience, but I declare to you tonight, wait on the Lord. God is doing something. God is creating something. He is making something, preparing. He is working this for our Good. In Hebrews chapter 10, the writer of Hebrews said, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense and reward, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. In chapter 12, verse 1, he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. I encourage you tonight to just keep trusting God. Just keep relying on the Lord. And understand his law of harvest. For what we sow that we're going to reap. Amen. And then that word of Galatians said. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. He makes everything beautiful in his time. So put your hope in the Lord. Put your trust in God. Do not allow your flesh, to, uh, your impatience of your flesh override that faith factor of your spirit. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to rely on the Lord and he's going to make it beautiful in his time. Let us pray. Father, to you, almighty God, we come. Lord, there's so many people today, God, that are dealing with issues, not just the present, uh, the present sickness, the pestilence of our land, but so many other issues as well. God, and our, our, our souls are even stirred up. There are some right now, God, that is, that is just, they're wringing their hands, they're, 
they're just they're they're at their wits' end, so to speak, Lord, at, at what they should do, and they feel that they need to make a move, that they need to, Lord, that they need to do something. But I pray, God, that Your Word would go forth and bring them peace. Help them, O oh God, to feel the peace of God as they are going to rest and trust in the fact that they that wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon God is going to receive the blessing, receive the victory. I pray, Almighty Savior, Lord, that you would give your strength and courage. Lord, you have given us your name, and we call on the name of Jesus Christ right now. I pray, Lord, that the battle, Almighty God, that these precious souls are facing, Lord, that they would gain the victory. And I pray strength, oh God, we believe that you are preparing that you are working something out for our good. I can't wait, Almighty God, to see the glory that shall be revealed in us. And I give you praise, Lord, and we hold on to that in faith believing in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you, church. Tune back in Sunday morning. We're going to have a great time in God. We love you.